those are the, the acute problems that we commonly see. The torsion is the one that obviously needs quick surgical intervention because you can't salvage the artery. Um, the cyst obviously needs the correct diagnosis so that you know patients can be treated um, appropriately. But that's conservative usually with pain medications. Well, pelvic masses can also produce pain or present as a mass. And again, we use ultrasound. Uh, if there's a mass in the abdomen, pelvis, we start with ultrasound. CT or MR used if ultrasound is equivocal, or if we think there's a malignant mass, then we stage it with one of these two. One thing about tumors in general and kids, epithelial tumors are rare any part of the body in children. They're really rare. In adults, and I do a lot of adult cancer work as well, uh, we're always talking about adenocarcinoma, and that's not what it is in a child. In a child, think of a simple cyst, a germ cell tumor or stromal tumor. Those are embryonic tumors. They're not adenocarcinoma. So ovarian masses, we'll look at cystic ones, teratoma, cystadenoma, and the solid ones are the germ cell embryonal tumors and the sex card stromal tumors. The teratoma is the most common ovarian neoplasm of the ovary. Most are benign. Uh, they may present just as a large mass, but they can do, cause pain due to torsion or um, just pressure from the large mass. And again, most of what we're talking about is the adolescent population. They're big pathologically. Mean diameter of 15 centimeters. They're cystic because they have a lot of sebaceous material and um, sebum is liquid at body temperature. They contain the peripheral nodule, the Rokotansky nodule, which contain, can contain fat, calcium, bone, or teeth. So this is what it looks like. It's a hypoechoic, anechoic mass, but it has peripheral nodules. If you see a girl with a pelvic, and sometimes these are big enough to be abdominal masses, always think about ovarian and look for both ovaries. If you see only one, think about an ovarian mass. In children, they're large enough to go up in the abdomen. And the teratoma has the peripheral nodules. We do CT for correlation, and you can see the fat and the calcification. Another appearance of the teratoma, pelvic mass, hypochoic, echogenic material anterior, the tip of the iceberg sign. This is usually fat or hair. Here's the CT. There's some fat and there's some hair. Teratoma. The other lesion, cystic lesion, we see is the cystadenoma. It's not really common. It's 5% of ovarian neoplasms. This is an epithelial tumor. In children, they're benign. Mucinous occur more than serous, and they're big. They're huge. Kids are small, and these are big. So the mucinous one has a lot of septations. It's multilocular because it has a lot of gelatin within it. Um, it's thin-walled. You know, it looks like a mesenteric cyst. That's the alternative diagnosis. Just remember, in a girl, if you see a cystic mass or a solid mass in the pelvis or lower abdomen, look at the ovaries because it can come from the ovary. And this is a, a mucinous cystadenoma. The serous cystadenoma contain watery contents. There's thin walled unilocular. Know, occasionally you see a few septations. So this patient had pain, and here's the mass. It looks like an annexal cyst. It's big, um, much larger than the cyst. We did bring this patient back and never never got smaller. Um, went to surgery, it's a serous cystadenoma. And here's another one. Huge mass with a few septations. Brought him back once or twice, never got smaller. It was a serous cystadenoma. And malignancies, germ cell tumor, far, far, uh, you know, away, just the number one diagnosis. Stromal tumors, and then epithelial tumors, very rare. Malignant germ cell tumors. As I said, most teratomas are benign. A few will be malignant. Benign teratomas, benign lesions are cystic. Solid tumors are malignant. And again, these affect pubertal girls. The tissue type include dysgerminoma, immature teratoma, endodermal sinus tumor, and embryonal cancer. We really can't separate these. 
does a histologic diagnosis, which may affect the type of drug the patient gets. Malignant tumors are once again huge. They're solid or complex. They have a lot of soft tissue, predominantly soft tissue. And these metastasize to local and distant lymph nodes and liver. They do not you know, go to the peritoneum or mesentery, similar to ovarian cancer. So a couple examples, 15-year-old girl, palpable mass in the pelvis, so only one ovary, this is an ovarian mass, predominantly solid, predominantly solid, turned out to be a dysgerminoma. 17-year-old girl, right lower quadrant pain, big mass, predominantly solid, a few cystic or necrotic areas, some internal flow, given the age, in fact, it comes from the ovary, it's solid, it's a germ cell tumor, this was in the dermal sinus. Sex cord stromal tumors, another group of tumors. And this is your clue. They affect prepubertal girls. There are two types, granulosa theca and Sertoli lytic. They're active. That's your clue. The granulosa theca produces estrogens, the Sertoli lytic androgens. Most are low-grade malignancies. They may go to peritoneum and liver. Both are solid, they're large, they have areas of necrosis and hemorrhage, and they're heterogeneous. Five-year-old girl, breast development. Remember I said they're, they're hormonally active. Here's an ovarian mass. It's got some flow in it. Here's the CT, five-year-old girl with precocious puberty. It's a uh, sex cord stromal tumor, granulosa theca. Six-year-old girl with virilization. We start with an ultrasound, big mass in the pelvis. Virilization, pelvic mass, Sertoli lytic. You know that even before they go to surgery, that's Sertoli lytic. And ovarian cancer is really rare, less than 1% of cases. It is epithelial. It's a solid mass. Mean size is like 4 centimeters or less, much smaller than the other tumors, and it does go to mesentery and omentum. Ovarian mass in this adolescent patient with abdominal pain. This is an omental metastases. Here's more, you can see this is the periphery of the abdominal wall, more omental metastases. CT, ovarian mass, and omental caking, ovarian cancer. So ovarian masses, teratoma, cystic, peripheral nodules, the cystadenoma, cystic, the mucinous one has septations. The serous one looks like just a big simple cyst. And then if it's solid, it's malignant. In the adolescent girl, germ cell tumor. And in the prepubertal girl, the sex cord stromal tumor. And then quickly, uterine mass is just cystic or solid, cystic hydrocolpose, solid rhabdo. Hydrocolpose is vaginal obstruction due to stenosis or a membrane. And the result is a pelvic or pelvic abdominal mass. We see it in neonates and adolescents. And it's simply a distended vagina. Colpos is vagina. Distended vagina. It may have debris or blood. If it has blood, it's called hematocolpos. And occasionally you can see blood in the uterus, hematometrocolpos. Neonate, distended vagina had a pelvic mass. This is the cervix and this is the uterus. Had an imperforate membrane. Adolescent with pain every month, no periods. Distended vagina. It's the vagina that dis distends. The uterus is normal. Had an imperforate membrane. Hydrocolpose. This had blood products, hematocolpose. It's an easy diagnosis. Another adolescent with pelvic pain. Huge distended vagina. And the tumor of the vagina and cervix is rhabdomyosarcoma. It's the most common pelvic tumor. It's the small blue cell tumor. has a bimodal age distribution under six and then adolescent patients. It arises in the vagina and the cervix, not the uterus. So the bottom line here when you, is that the diseases, the pelvic organs, the tumors, or vagina and cervix, um, not the uterus in a child and an adolescent. It presents with vaginal bleedings and it presents as the soft tissue mass on imaging and the metastases go to liver, lung, nodes, and bone. Two-year-olds, so what would you do with this? 
You see something behind the bladder. Is it rectum? I don't think so. Look at the long axis view. This is that prepubertal uterus I showed you, this little tube. This is a vagina filled with tumor, rhabdomyosarcoma. And here's a five-year-old girl with vaginal bleeding. Here's the uterus. It's probably got some blood product in it. This is the vagina. Very vascular. Here's the MR. That's rhabdo, large heterogeneous mass. So common pelvic lesions, what you need to know, functional variances are really common. There are tumors that are cystic, cystic teratoma, cystadenoma. The malignant tumors are solid. That's your clue. They're usually germ cell tumors. And then the prepubertal girl sex cord stromal tumors, they're functional. And then in the vagina and the cervix, the benign lesion is hydrocopose. And if it's malignant, it's rhabdomyosarcoma. Mm -hmm.